This is The Italian Billionaire's Christmas Bride Written and narrated by Molly Matthews Chapter 1 Che cavallo! No, no, no! This will not do! Only an anorexic model could wear something that resembles a straw thundered Massimiliano Balfoni, CEO of Emporio Balfoni, Milan's most prestigious fashion house. His coal-black brows knitted in a fierce line as he looked with disdain at the scatter of sketches the young designer splayed on Max's 15th century walnut desk. His protégé began to protest, but one piercing look from the maestro forced his lips shut. His body stiffened as if frozen to the floor, reminded that his employer's wrath was more dangerous than black ice. Alexandra Gorbots is a rich and real woman, the world's richest woman, and someone like me that demands perfection. Max's mouth curved in a controlled smile. It was that fear he detected in the young man's face as Max pierced him with his dark gaze? He had every reason to be afraid. Enemies and friends alike knew Max had destroyed promising careers for lesser transgressions. Infinitesimal precision, extraordinary control, unrivaled beauty, Max suffered nothing less. Pressing his fingertips to the smooth, cool parchment, he paused momentarily as a childhood memory stirred in his consciousness. He sucked in a breath and swept his hands brusquely across the page. He was no longer the lonely child who furtively sketched movie stars in beautiful clothes and dreamed of a Hollywood life. What was once an escape was now a thriving commercial enterprise with insatiable demands. Max flourished his gold fountain pen across the page, adding a sweep of curves to the hips and breasts of the bespoke wedding gown his fashion house had been commissioned to design. Now at the helm of his multi-billion dollar empire, Max was no longer a hands-on designer, but nothing went out the door without his final veto. Some called him a control freak, and this he took, not as a criticism, but as the highest compliment. He waited to feel the rush of joy he used to feel when drawing as a child. He stopped to await the all-consuming love that arose from knowing that no one possessed his raw talent and genius. He paused to feel the pride that came years later from knowing he designed dresses perfectly to satisfy only one client on her most important day. There was nothing. It shouldn't have surprised him. He had long ago accepted that he was unable to feel the joy that other people did. He'd turned off that part of himself years ago and had vowed never again to succumb to vulnerability. In its place, carefully groomed aloofness and instilling fear in others were traits he prized and relentlessly cultivated. As his protégé braced for the consequences, Max forced his thoughts back to the commission. While he felt nothing in his heart, what he did experience as he looked up at the drawing of the wedding dress executed to his design was a coolly detached appreciation that satisfied the perfectionist in him. The lines and structure now conformed absolutely to his definition of ideal. The controlled grey palette reflected his personality and every detailed aspect had been meticulously executed as he had commanded. No randomness or chaos anywhere. Having witnessed his parents' brutal marriage and subsequent divorce, Max had no misguided notions of happily ever after, nor any desire to marry. Perfectionism in relationships was simply unattainable, but the knowledge that he was at the helm of an empire that created exquisite, extraordinarily elegant gowns admired by the world's most elite, at the same time preserving historic tradition, filled him with a degree of pride. But as for the rest of his life, the personal, emotional side, he felt nothing, and that suited him perfectly. 
Max's long, subtle fingers drummed an impatient rhythm on the armrest of his chair. Alora, Well? People react to fear, not love, he reminded himself as he kept his voice soft, but somehow containing all the might of the towering spires of the Duomo looming beyond his window. A slither of fear crept into the young designer's hushed apology. I should have thought more about the woman beneath the dress. Thinking is not enough, Max commanded, his voice a dark, stark thing in the quiet of his office. You must apply. Taking the drawings in both hands, he tore the pages down the middle. Begin again, and this time bring me excellence. Ignoring the tiny pin-like tremors piercing his chest, Max pushed back from the desk and rose to his feet as the young man retrieved the torn fragments and scuttled quickly toward the door. Striding across the room, Max willed his racing heart to cede to his control.